Hi, I'm Rob Boak, and I want to demo how you can create a custom gauge inside of your Unity project. So before I get into Unity, I want to start with this is our gauge. And this is just a simple two-dimensional representation of a gauge. I have it here in Illustrator, which allowed me to convert that into vector art that gets exported as an SVG file. And then I take that into Blender, which is an uh, free 3D modeling software. Once it's in, I then click on each of the individual segments and I set an extrusion. Then I can save this .blend file. And what I get out of that is then a 3D model that I can import into Unity and use that as a part of my gauge. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to bring Unity back up and we have demo and we're going to just call this demo gauge and go ahead and create the project. All right, we, we won't be needing services. We'll go back to inspector view. And so what I have is a blank uh, Unity framework. I'm going to go ahead and create a folder to put our gauge in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in the gauge blend file. And as I do that, what Unity is going to do is it's going to make materials for all of the materials that were in the object in that gauge object. And so here in a second, we will have a materials library as well as our gauge. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete the materials folder and then I'm going to delete the gauge at the root. So now I have one in my gauge folder. I'm going to take that gauge, I'm going to drag it into my hierarchy. And then if I zoom in, we will see that the gauge is right there just like I had it. Now, a couple of things that need to happen here. My gauge should be at 0, 0, 0, great there. I'm going to go ahead and scale this up a bit in every dimension to be twice as big. And so we can see then um, in our game view that the gauge is a little bit bigger. Um, the other thing I need to do is I need to get my rotation right. And I'm doing this so that my camera will impact this correctly. So I'm going to just turn around center here. And we'll see now that from my point of view that I have my gauge and you can see that it's three dimensional. I'm going to take my main camera and I'm going to move it into position. And when I do that, you'll see that I get my gauge here in the center of the screen, or more or less in the center of the, the display. Um, this gauge, I need to be able to interact with it, and I also want to put text in the center of it. So I'm going to start by putting text in the center, and I'm going to do that by UI text. Two things happened. Uh, it added the text that I asked for, but it also added a canvas. That canvas actually got put up at the main level, and I don't want it there. I want it underneath my gauge. So I now have my text. I also want to add in a slider. And the slider is what I'm going to use to interact with the this graph. When I get to uh, working with the graph, I'm going to this, this gauge. When I work with the gauge, I want the slider to manipulate it. So I have now my basic system. What I don't have is I don't have any scripts, anything to connect this together. So I'm going to go ahead and add a component, scroll down to new script, and this is going to be the gauge script. And I'm going to do one other script. I'm on, a, on the slider. I'm going to add a component. And here I'm going to add a component, which is slider to gauge. And each of these pieces of code are going to have different pieces in it. So in gauge, if I were to look at that, um, I can double click here, or what I'm going to do is in assets, we'll see that I've got my two scripts there. I'm going to go ahead and create a folder for them, drag them in. There's my scripts. 
I drag those two into scripts. All right, so now I have my scripts, which are attached to my objects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the gauge script, and I'm going to build this script out. So when you get a script, you get two things. And you get a startup, and you get an update. Startup is called once when the object is created. Update gets called once for frame. And what we're going to do is we're going to really start from the point of view of the start method. So we want to get all of the objects that are the individual mesh objects. So if we go back to blend or go back to Unity here, we see that each of these segments um, exist individually. So I want to go get those so that I can programmatically turn them on and off. Inside of every object, there is a game object. And the game object has something called get components and children. I can filter it for the things I want, and I'm going to actually ask it for all the mesh filters, and that's all those individual segments. So that'll return that to me. Now that's good, except that those are not in any particular order. Those are not set up in any particular way. So what I want to do is I'm going to use link to get them in order. Now, if I just paste this in, use a link function, it says, hey, you don't have link, so I'll add that to my using statements. That solves that. I also need a place to put this, so if I just do mesh filter segments, now, I've got my segments, and they're in order. What I don't have is I don't have a reference to my text. And so if I just were to do text, hey, it says there's nothing there. That's because text actually exists under UI. All right. So now I can put a text reference out here, and we'll call this one label. I'll set that to null. And... I can grab my label. So what I'm doing is really just getting all of my elements so I don't have to keep trying to go get these elements one by one by one. I'm going to get them once, stir off my references so that I can do these updates. Now there are two components that I need to do before I can finish my start method. And one is I need to get a format string put together for my display of text because my display of text I want to offer how many decimal places to display so I want to have that and and I'm going to just have a method call here forget format string and I'm going to store that into something called format string which of course I haven't defined so let's just define that by the way I could make these guys private because I'm want them to be private and be a little more explicit about it. All right, so I've got my target, but I don't have a format string component. And I'm going to just paste this in without a ton of explanation because it is really trying to get a formatting string so that when we go to format the text, we can pass that in as a parameter. The other thing I don't have is I don't have decimal places. Now, decimal places is a little bit different because... Um, for decimal places, I need to define it up here, but I need to make it public. I also need for it to be able to call my get format string so that it gets updated whenever someone sets decimal places. So I have an internal field, a private field, and then a public property, and the property when it's set then calls format string. So Got a couple more things going on. There's a string builder that we need. Well, that's in system.txt. We can, of course, go ahead and let it do that for us. All right, so now we've got our formatting string. We've got our start really put together pretty well, except for one last method call. And that last method call is we need to be able to update the display. So this is not a call to update. So update display, it's going to give us a little red squiggly here in a second. This is not a call to this method. In fact, we're going to just delete this out of our code file because I don't want to use 
update. I don't want something to run every frame. I really just want something to run when I need to update my display. Now, when might I need to update the display? Well, when I'm updating my display, I really need to do that when the percentage changes. Well, we don't even have the percentage defined, so I'm going to go ahead and define percentage. And so I've got a private percentage, which is the internal field, and then I've got the public property. And of course, I still don't have update display defined, so I'm getting squiggles for that. If I go look at what update display should be and paste that in, what update display does is, as you might expect, updates the display. Now, it does this with a little bit of math that takes a few extra parameters we didn't define, max items visible. So we need to know how many segments are there in the graph that I'm going to turn on and off. Now, I could get the length of the array and use that. The problem with using the length of the array is if someone added additional segments or additional adornments in this graph, then it would start to break. So rather than use that, we're going to get a constant, and this particular gauge has 18 elements. All right, so now if we look at what the math is doing, basically this is converting the, this portion of it is converting the, no, the items visible into a percentage. And then that's getting multiplied against the percent. So we get um, visible items. So rather than having a percentage which is 87 or 63, that turns it into the number of items we need to turn on. That's great, so then we do a for each loop, and for each of our children, we get a segment from our segments list that we got up above, and then what we're doing is, for the child mesh filter, we get its game object, because it has a reference, and then we set whether it's active. And what we're setting it to be active is this segment here. It's a Boolean expression, just like you'd use in an if statement. It's a little awkward because we need to flip things around. As it turns out, the bigger parts of this graph are drawn, this gauge are drawn first, or have lower numbered names. And so I need to invert that, and we take the max items visible, to the maximum items that can be visible minus the items visible. And so basically we flip this around so that it'll work um, as you go up, it'll start turning things uh, on. So the last little bit here is we do need to update our text. There's a label prefix and suffix, and this is how we were building our formatting strings, so that we can now have something precede the percentage and something be after it. So we need those two strings so that we can use them. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those. I'm going to put them up here with our private variables. Actually, I'm going to put them right in the middle because they are fields that are public versus properties. So we now have a label suff prefix and suffix, which we can set and use. All right, so now everything's lit up correctly, and we have no more errors. So what this is going to do is it gets everything set up, and then whenever somebody updates percentage, it is going to then go in and make an update to the display, turn on and off the segments of the graph, and then it's going to update the text. So that's all fine and good. The problem is we don't have a way to, to actually visualize this. We don't have a way to visualize this because there's nothing set up to drive this. So that's what our slider was for. So if we go into assets and we go into scripts and we see slider to gauge, well, slider to gauge is completely open, right? What we're going to do here is create a method call that we can call from the Unity UI. And this does a couple of things. First of all, it's taking in a floating point of percent, and that's the percent of the gauge, uh, which we'll wire up in a second. We're getting our game object, we're getting transform, and then we're getting parent and parent. Now that looks a little odd, but the reason we're doing that is the baseline game object does not have a parent on it. But as it happens, they all have transform. The transforms have both parents and game objects. So we can walk up one level, two level, and go get our game object. If we go look back in Unity, 
we'll see that the slider has one parent, which is Canvas, and Gage is a second level parent. So we're getting the Gage. And then for the Gage, we use something called send message. And we're calling a method, it's really what we're calling, called set percentage, and we're providing it the percent parameter. Now, we've not plugged this in, so we need to go back to Gage, and in Gage, we need to add that method so that we have a set percentage. And so that looks like this. And so it's really just going to do a test to make sure that we're not accidentally causing the update to be called a lot of times. But if it's a new percentage, we'll set it to percent, which will in turn call update display after updating it. So all good. The only thing that we've got left is to finish wiring this up in the Unity user interface. So if I were to go down to slider and I look at my inspector, and in my inspector, you see on value changed. This allows me to fire an event when something is changed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the plus sign so that I get one. I'm going to tell this editor in runtime, and I'm doing that because I want to be able to demo this from inside of the editor. But what I need is an object. Now this is going to seem a little counterintuitive. I'm going to drive the slider back into itself here. There's a reason for that, and the reason is the slider to gauge function, or the slider to gauge script that we have, is attached to slider, and I need an instance of it. So I need to get the slider so that I can call the method on the slider to gauge that is inside of that object. The top of this list says dynamic float. What that is, is it's saying I will dynamically pass you a floating point variable happens to be the value of the slider into the function you call and this is going to be set gauge so what i said is when i change the slider then i want you to change the percentage ultimately change the percentage in the gauge so that we can see it so if i hit play here nothing's displayed but as i rotate through we'll see that I'm doing the gauge up and down. Now there is one problem, and that problem you may have noticed, which is I can't see my text. Um, and that's because of a bug earlier in the process. I didn't move the text to where it needed to be. If I reposition the text, you'll see it's slightly behind the slider here. And we'll just move this a little out of the way so that we can get it to show up and I'll actually slide the slider down a little bit so, it's not a lot out of the way but it'll show us now if I go back into play mode that my percentage will start to get updated along with my gauge so quick and easy, I now have a gauge that's fully evented and ready to be plugged into a user interface.